From the time mankind developed writing and complex civilization evolved, humans have created maps. Old cartography was used for many different reasons, some spiritual, some economic, much like any form of creativity in ancient times. For the most part, it allowed people to understand their environment and eventually theorize of distant lands. Cartography shapes how we think about the globe, how we see ourselves. In this video, I'm going to briefly explore the history of cartography over the centuries. So what were the first maps? The Babylonians created the first type of maps, carving them onto clay tablets. Some maps were sketches of town structures, but for the most part they were far different than how we would perceive typical maps. On the Babylonian world map, the world was represented by basic geometric shapes, not literal replications on tablet. Their neighbors are deliberately left out, and Babylonian religious matter is labeled as a physical place in the world. Throughout much of human history, mystical lands and religious tales were labeled as factual places on maps. Since satellites did not exist and maps were the only way to see the world, such lands could be seen just as real to the people as Britain or Spain. Say you live in a pre-exploration society where little of anything has been explored. I tell you of a land somewhere out in the Atlantic Ocean. There is no way you can sail to it, and since this map is accurate to others like it, you have no reason to disbelieve it, and no way to disprove it. So for most of human history, areas not left explored are left blank, put into legend, or sometimes guessed with mythical places. The ancient Greeks began to philosophize about the world around them, as ancient Greeks tended to do. What we would traditionally consider a map was first produced by the philosopher Anaximander, and it represented the three continents known to the Greeks at the time, Europe, Asia, and Libya. The Greeks separated Europe from Asia, and the mindset has stuck ever since. At this time, the Greeks believed the Earth was a flat disk, with an ocean on the very edge. By antiquity in ancient Greece, it became common knowledge that the Earth was actually a sphere, simply by judging by the stars and sun. With the expansion of Alexander the Great's empire, the Greeks mapped new regions of the Asian continent. For centuries, the smaller Greeks were subject to outside invasions, and so lands past Anatolia were much of a mystery. By Roman times, the Greek-Egyptian Ptolemy created the most extensive view of the Western world. Using research from past scholars, Ptolemy mistakenly theorized the Indian Ocean as a large, enclosed body of water with the coastline extending from Africa and connecting into Asia. This mistake would be corrected by the Arab cartographer Mohammed ibn Musa al khwarizmi in 833. From this point, it became common knowledge that the Indian Ocean was wide open and was not surrounded by land. The Greek philosopher Strabo documented the numerous people across Europe and Asia. At this era, Europeans were beginning to hear about a mysterious civilization on the edge of the continent, the Chinese. Communication between the two was rare, simply from the distance. However, Roman and Chinese items did pass through Persian and Indian merchants. This meant that the Chinese at least were mentioned on the edge of the distant world, or as it was known to the Romans, Serica. The Chinese created maps as well, even as early as 5th century BC. China had created large-scale maps of river systems, towns, and locations for economic purposes. By the Han Dynasty, the Chinese had created complex maps with symbols and cardinal directions. By the Song Dynasty, in the 12th century, the Chinese were able to create stone complex maps of river systems in fantastic detail. When the Romans fell and the Middle Ages began, Europeans looked inward instead of globally. Instability and the spread of Christianity across Europe rapidly changed the population. Interpretations meant that the previously correct advancements in cartography were swept away as they were supposedly false according to the literal biblical beliefs. Some even theorized the Earth was square due to certain passages. The medieval maps were not meant for navigation. They were more symbolic, meant to illustrate the perception of the world at the time. A common style of map was the TNO, a simplified pattern which split the world into three different zones, Europe, Asia, and Africa. The T was the Mediterranean, and the O was the global ocean which surrounded the continents. In the medieval age, the Arabs, with their new conquest of the Middle East and North Africa, had begun a new age of learning. Arab cartographers not only corrected Ptolemy's predictions, but also navigated India and Central Asia as well. These important findings would then be helpful to the Europeans in the following centuries. TNO maps were becoming unpopular, and in the 13th century, Italian scholars invented the Portland chart, allowing for far better documentation of the coastlines and allowing for more accurate trade routes. By the Renaissance, Europe was once again willing to explore. The Ottomans had made the traditional route between Asia and Europe unreliable, and so Europeans began looking to new regions. The Age of Discovery had begun. Columbus was not the first European to the Americas. 
Columbus was not the one to discover the Earth was round. Columbus's actions simply led to European attention to the Americas. This map, the map of Juan de la Cosa, who traveled with Columbus, is the first documentation of the Americas, with sketches of the Caribbean islands back in 1500, although at the time it was assumed to be Asia. This new rush for colonies spurred the Europeans to invest in the sciences, cartography, and new advances to explore the world. Spanish monarchs financed expeditions which allowed explorers to create maps such as this. Now, we get to our modern age. In our world, it's hard to imagine never being able to see what our planet looks like. But for almost all of human history, artistically drawn and recently scientific maps were the only thing people had to picture the world itself. For thousands of years, mankind only saw the world through drawings. It wasn't until just decades ago with the space program when humans got the first pictures of what our planet actually looked like. This relates to us because cartography has shaped how we perceive ourselves in the world. With GPS, our world feels smaller, and with the internet, more connected. You can click on Google Maps and traverse literal pictures of anywhere on the globe. Men died just to explore the same region we can now navigate with our computer mouse. This is just a quick overview to briefly teach the history of cartography, maybe get you interested in looking into these old maps by yourself. I hope you do. This is Cody of Geography Hub.